oyster. It's going to be really crispy on the outside, nice and moist in the middle, and it's the perfect little snack to enjoy with a nice cold beer. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our daikon. It's about a thousand different types of radish. This is a big, big Japanese one. And what it does is it breaks down the oysters and it makes them really, really tender. We're basically going to massage the oysters like they do in Japan for about three or four minutes with this daikon. Being very careful not to take your fingers off. And we're going to set that aside for a second. Now the next thing that we have to do is open our oysters. Now it's quite a tricky process and you need to be very, very careful. Now there's lots of different types of oysters. And if you want to save yourself a little bit of bother, you can actually go to the Asian market and you'll get a jar with big juicy oysters in there. And they are just as good as these. They're actually pasteurized. But I just like that notion of going with a fresh one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our oyster. We're going to lay it flat on our tea towel. And what I have here is a little oyster knife. Go ahead and buy one of these. They're very useful. You'll always need it if you're working with oysters. What it's got is this piece around the edge. And that's going to protect your hand. Because we're going to be pushing down there with great force. And if I miss, I'm never going to hurt myself because I've always got that protection there. So the first thing we look for is it's like a little valve. If you see in there, we're going to slip our knife in there and using force, we're just going to wedge it open. So what I do is I lay it flat, I cover it with the tea towel because the last thing you want, if I don't cover it and I hold it like that, there's a danger that I can follow straight through into my hand. So what I do is I cover it up like that so now if I go through, I'm just going to hit the tea towel, so it's no worry at all. So we're looking for that little valve, and just using a lot of pressure, and we just force our way in there. And you can see it just open up. And what you do then, is you just run your oyster knife all the way around the outside. So we open it up, and inside, you can see that lovely, juicy oyster. So what I do then is I just run my oyster knife underneath it, break that little tendon, and we're going to put it in the bowl with the rest of our oysters. Perfect oyster. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring them over to our strainer and just strain them off nicely in there. Just leave them there for about 10 or 15 seconds and let that excess water just strain off. So once they've been strained, they're actually going to go in on top of our nice daikon that we grated a second ago. And you can really see how plump those nice oysters are. They're going to fry up absolutely perfectly. So they go in with the daikon. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to massage these oysters. And what we're doing there is we're really tenderizing them. So just using your hands very, very simply, just rub them nice and softly. You really need to be very gentle with your hands because the oysters are quite delicate and you really don't want to smash them up. And just take them one at a time and with the daikon, just very softly rub it into that oyster. And I can't stress enough how tender this daikon will make the oysters. If you can't find daikon for whatever reason, you can do this exact same process with a tiny amount of salt. Just rub the salt into that oyster and then you need to wash it off very, very well. So keep massaging them for about 30 seconds. And what we're going to do then is we're going to wash them by just filling it up with fresh water. And what we'll do is we'll pick up each oyster, give it a little rinse, and drop it back into that strainer that we used earlier. So just rinse it off, make sure there's no excess pieces of daikon, any little bits of shell, anything like that, and place them back in your strainer. So I've taken my oysters out and I've laid them on a nice piece of paper towel. And what I'm going to do is using another piece of paper towel, I'm going to dry them off very thoroughly individually. Now this step is so, so crucial. Just turn them over as you dry them. It's so important that we get them really, really dry because we're looking for that lovely, lovely, crispy 
outside and we're not going to get that if they're in any way damp or there's any excess moisture on there so take your time if it takes you 10 minutes to do this so be it you want to get them so so dry I really can't emphasize that enough what we've set up here is basically our breadcrumbing station I've got some regular flour I'm going to get two eggs so they go straight into our bowl just like that and we just bring them together and the last stage of the breadcrumb section is the breadcrumbs now I'm using Japanese stuff panko breadcrumbs. You'll find these in most supermarkets and if you've ever been to a Japanese restaurant you might have had something that's deep fried and it's got that really crunchy breadcrumb on the outside. That's what these are, panko. You'll be able to find them and it really is worth that extra effort. So what we do is we just put the oyster into first the flour and we want to shake off any excess flour. You want a light dusting these really are light and crunchy and it's important that we do these steps correctly so in it goes into the egg just hold it by the very end like that and shake off any of the excess and the last thing to do is into the panko coat it in the breadcrumbs and just give it a little shake like that you don't even need to get your hands in there and then what you'll find is you have a lovely little breadcrumb coated oyster that's ready to go into that lovely hot oil and it'll end up beautiful and crispy. So now that my oysters are all nicely breaded, I'm going to deep fry them. Now what I've got here is a little pot of oil. You could also use your nice home fryer. But I'm looking at my oil on my little thermometer and that's coming up to 180 degrees. That's absolutely perfect. If you're not lucky enough to have either a thermometer for your pot of oil or your little fryer, the other way of testing it is just grab one of your oysters and what I'm going to do is just very carefully lower them in at the edge and you see those little bubbles that are coming out that's the perfect stage to just drop them in I'm going to only do four at a time here because it's very important that we keep that nice hot temperature in the oil because that's what's going to get them lovely and crispy it's also very important that we only fry them for about 45 seconds because although we want that nice golden brown exterior we don't want a mushy overcooked interior so just keep them moving around and as soon as you see them starting to go golden brown that's the moment to whip them straight out now what I've set up here is a nice paper towel on a plate and I've got a slotted spoon here which is absolutely perfect first of all we're going to drain the grease off with this then we're going on to the paper towel which will get the rest of the grease and what you'll be left with will be a lovely crunchy oyster which will be absolutely delicious so you flip those around and you can see them starting to take some colour there always be extremely extremely careful when using oil on the stove top it's very very dangerous if you let the temperature go too high there's every chance that you could get a huge big fire so that's the last thing we want so be very very careful so those are looking perfectly golden brown I'm going to shake that excess grease off and onto my plate they go and those are absolutely perfect I'm going to serve them up 